I want to talk to you about a process I call making an expert. And um, the thing that um, made me um, think about this was going through the process of putting together uh, a system to track information about the new documentary from Netflix called Making a Murderer. And as I was doing it, I realized, wow, this is something that um, I do that I take for granted that other people uh, might learn from. And so what I want to share with you is a workflow that has two moving parts, um, a content reader called InnoReader and a uh, sharing tool called Buffer or Hootsuite. You could use either one. Uh, I prefer Buffer. I think it does a better job than Hootsuite, but um, one of the problems with this workflow, if you want to call it that, is that you'll find so much great information that uh, you'll need to be able to parse it out, to put it into a queue so, so that you share it and don't inundate people with information. Okay, so some important principles here. If you want to be called an expert in your field or a thought leader or whatever it is that you, you know, you want to call it, um, you need to be able to manage all of the information in your world that will keep you current in this space. I maintain there are four types of information, sites, searches, sources, and someday maybe information. Sites, very clear. It's a website with an RSS feed. A search is a specific word search or phrase keyword search uh, for a particular topic. A source is a person, and that so that's different than a website, but a source is a person, their Twitter account, their Google Plus page, their Facebook page, whatever. And someday maybe information is information that you may not uh, be able to use uh, right away. So. Let's flip over to uh, InnoReader. This is a freemium tool. And by freemium, I mean it starts out free. And it, uh, you know, if you want additional services or functionality or whatever, then um, what you do is, uh, you know, you pay an additional fee. So um, the fee for InnoReader at the highest level is less than $5 a month. And it's one of the single most important tools that I uh, use. So let's say that, um, you know, here I have a folder called uh, MAM for making a murderer. And already you can see that I'm uh, tracking a couple of different accounts. How did that happen? Well, what I did was I just go into the search box and uh, InnoReader is going to give me uh, several different choices. Articles, my articles, in other words, articles that are already in my RSS feed about making a murderer. Public articles about making a murderer. And what this is, this is like Google Alerts. Um, this will scour the entire internet and it will uh, return new hits and bring them to you. Articles in the current section about making a murderer. RSS feeds about making a murderer bundles, which is a package of RSS feeds that other people have put together that I could subscribe to, users who are like making a murderer, Twitter for making a murderer, Google Plus for making a murderer, and Google News. So for example, let's take a look at a couple of different things. If I go through public articles about making a murderer, you know, reader is going to search the internet And it's going to come back and it's going to give me the ability to do what's called creating an active search. And I can match all words, any words, the full phrase or an advanced search syntax. I can look for titles and contents. I can see the newest results first. I can pick from all sites, popular sites or most, most popular sites. I could say today, this week, this month, this year, all time or some kind of custom interval. And then I can create this search and I can put it in a feed. Likewise, as I look across the top, and by the way, notice this says it found 1,319 articles. I can check uh, for RSS feeds about making a murderer. It says there are none. Bundles about making a murderer. It says there are none. Uh, Twitter feeds. Okay, now under Twitter feeds, 
there are approximately uh, a dozen users, including Making a Murderer, the Making a Murderer account. These are the two filmmakers. Um, this is Stephen Avery himself. This is Jerome Buting, one of the defense attorneys who's very active. Carla Chase, who is uh, speaking for the family, uh, the Avery Dassey family. Uh, and then I don't know who these people are, but you can also subscribe to a search about making a murderer. Okay. And so when I do that, then, so let's say, for example, um, I do have Carla Chase in here. So let's say I want to, I don't know who this person is. Um, I could go and, and uh, view them on Twitter, but let's say if I wanted to subscribe, then uh, what I would do is just click the subscribe button. And I would have the ability to take this person and add him or her to the MAM folder. And from that point forward, I would receive information. As I look at this Twitter account, um, it doesn't seem to me to be worth it to do that. So I'm going back to the previous page. And I can look and see who is talking about making a murderer in Google+. Plus. So here is a, there is a making a murderer uh, page. Uh, here's another one. Um, I see some other ones uh, that are in here. Again, I have the option to add this uh, to a folder for organization purposes. I'm going to go back to the previous page. Nothing here that I might want to, um, you know, to uh, look at, but I definitely want to subscribe to these search results in Google Plus and add those to the folder. Okay. So I continue uh, if I wanted to uh, check Google News. Here's a search uh, that I could subscribe to. And if I want to find uh, users you know, who are talking about this, I could. But again, what I'm able to do here is to track websites, searches, sources, and someday maybe information in that, you know, like I may not, um, you know, like always, uh, you know, use that, you know, right away. I want to make sure that I have Carla Chase in the, um, you know, in the right uh, folder here. So now I go back to this um, MAM folder, and I have, if you can see here, I don't know if I can expand this anymore or no, but I have the Brendan Dassey account, the Carla Chase account, Jerome Buting, Kathleen Zellner, uh, Kent, who's the, uh, the new defense attorney, Ken Kratz, who is the prosecutor, the filmmakers, uh, a couple of different RSS feeds, um, Stephen Avery account himself. And then what I'm able to do with this is to put this all in a folder. And I can take a look at the folder settings and do all kinds of different things um, with this. Okay, I could rename the folder. I could delete the folder. I could unsubscribe from all of these. I could create a rule or a bundle of information, an RSS feed. I could create um, an HTML clip. And with an HTML clip, I could take that HTML and I could put it in a website and have a page that would just be a stream of information coming from uh, this folder. Uh, let's see, what else can I do? I can sort it. Uh, newest first, oldest first, manage folders, manage the subscriptions. But what I'm doing at this point is I'm creating a virtual news magazine about one topic that's filled with sites, searches, sources, and someday maybe information. Okay. Then what do I do with that? Well, I've got a number of different ways I can see this in a list view, in an expanded view, in a column view, in a card view, which I have now. Um, this is the one that I tend to prefer. 
So let's take a look, for example, at what an expanded view would look like. So in an expanded view, um, I'm going to get uh, a lot of information, um, you know, like all in one place. I could go in and do this as a list view. And then I see um, just a, you know, like a whole bunch of uh, different information uh, or, or just the title, excuse me, and a little bit of, you know, what exactly is, uh, is in there. Um, like I said, I tend to use the card view. Um, there's a magazine view, you know, so you can consume this information um, in any way that, uh, that you want. After that, um, in InnoReader, there's a very powerful set of keyboard shortcuts that you activate with uh, plus and question, or excuse me, shift and question mark. And so one of the things that I'm able to do is to go through here and um, do a, uh, I can change my views, I can increase the font size, I can, you know, do all kinds of different things. But the ones that I tend to do more often are next article, previous article, and um, I think there is a, uh, there's a way to send something to Evernote if I'm using Evernote. I think that I can also uh, press B for buffer um, if that's the tool that I'm going to use to be sharing. But I can do everything from the keyboard. So this folder over here, I can continue to add sources to it. Um, one of the things that doing so like as I'm going and flipping through information let's say I see something that I really uh, am interested in there is a uh, you know like when you're using a content reader you get a summary of that information if you want to see the entire content there is a key that you can click on that will show you the entire article without having to go to the website now in this particular uh, issue um, I see something here that I might want to curate, okay? So if I press V for view, this will take me to the exact page um, that I wanted to, uh, from which I want to curate information. And this is where buffer comes in really handy. So what I have done already, I've created a page called a Making a Murderer page in um, uh, Google Plus. Um, and why did I pick Google Plus? Well, I picked Google Plus because of the name uh, Google and that a Google Plus page is more open to organic search than a Facebook page is. And it gives me an opportunity to do richer multimedia than Twitter. I could have picked, uh, as the uh, diagram shows, a Facebook profile or page, a Google Plus page, or a Twitter account. I chose uh, the Twitter account. Or excuse me, <laughs> I chose the Google Plus page. Then what I did was I went into Buffer and I added um, a Making a Murderer Google Plus page and profile. And I went into the schedule. And one of the problems with using a system like this is that I could... Uh, easily inundate people with way too much information. So what it is that I've decided to do is I'm only going to post articles about making a murderer up to seven times a day. And there is a feature in Buffer that I really love. It's called the Optimal Timing Tool. And what it does is it goes uh, into my account and it figures out when are people most likely to be available for engaging with my content? So I pick the page, and I pick the number of times that I want to post, and then I calculate the times. And this shows the arc of when people are engaging with my content, but it's recommending that I post at later times throughout the day. So I tell it to replace the existing schedule, and then what's going to happen is that Buffer is going to look at it's going to create this queue. And as I share content to the queue, then these things are just going to sit in this queue. As you can see, I've shared quite a few articles. There are 20 
that are sitting in the queue. And if I'm only posting seven times a day, that means that it's going to take three days for this queue to be emptied. In the meantime, I'm probably going to be adding more content to it. And what does that look like? Well, here's one of the reasons why I really love um, uh, using Buffer. Again, it's not just the queue. It's not just the optimal timing tool. Um, but uh, anyway, so what um, what I wanted to do uh, is go in here and like grab maybe the you know the most important um, uh, you know part of this thing, and I'm just going to go and grab these four paragraphs. And because I have the buffer extension installed, I say buffer selected text. And here's what happens. The text that I highlighted is captured. It's put in quotation marks. There is a, um, there are a, a question, or sorry, quotation mark there, along with a link to the original content. The image is captured, the title, and the intro. And so what I do then is I um, go in and uh, click on the Making a Murderer icon so it will be sent to the correct page. And from here, I have the ability to share this next, to share it now, to schedule the post for any date and time in the future. Uh, another thing that I can do with that, go back. is if I had something like really important that I wanted to make sure that people saw, then uh, I can also go in and do a um, power scheduler. And I can say, I want this posted now and save that. I want this posted in eight hours and save that. I want this posted in a day and save that. I want this posted again in seven days. Okay. And then I could add all four of these updates to the queue. I could add another one. I could make it in, you know, two weeks, whatever. Okay. I'm going to go back though to the simple composer and I'm just going to say add this to the queue. And when I do that, it says adding to your buffer. And so that's been added. And if I go back here to this page and I refresh, then what we'll see is that way at the bottom of the queue, or what we should have seen, anyway, it will be there. It's probably just not refreshed yet. Um, whoop, an unknown error occurred. Give it another try. Um, so anyway, that's going to be there in the queue and it will, uh, it will be parsed out. So just going back and, you know, I'm taking a, a, another look at this. Maybe it makes more sense now. Um, you use this great, powerful, powerful tool called AnnoReader. It's better than Feedly. It's better than any other tool at gathering this kind of information. You use it to track four distinct types of information, sites, searches, sources, and someday maybe information. You use a tool like Buffer or Hootsuite because you're going to find so much great stuff that you're going to quickly inundate people with information if you don't have a mechanism for parsing it out over time. And you can send it to a Facebook profile or page, a Google Plus page, or a Twitter account. Other optional moving parts that you might want to use. I use Evernote for all my someday maybe information. If I see a good article that I don't want to share, but I want to make sure that I save it, I don't bookmark it, I put it in Evernote. And the last is, you could also use a tool called Friends Plus Me to do the distribution. Um, Friends Plus Me is a phenomenal tool that um, does a, a really great job. It will, um, you know, it will keep a queue. It will parse things out. Um, it has the extra advantage of 
being able to share to a collection or to a community, which Buffer or Hootsuite do not, or a profile for that matter. Um, but Buffer has the optimal timing tool. And uh, for that reason, I continue to use Buffer. One of the things that, you know, in closing, uh, I maintain that things should be made as simple as possible, but never simpler. If you're only doing, you know, you want to do this, you want to use this kind of system to give yourself a, a steady diet of some of the best information that you can find, then use InnoReader and or Buffer and or Hootsuite and or Friends Plus Me. And you've got a complete workflow around thought leadership that only has two moving parts for uh, as little as $5 a month, well, as little as $0 a month, and as much as $15 a month. But to me, that's a very small price for creating a personal news agency that continues to fuel your expertise and helps you find great content to share for your content marketing campaigns. If you have any questions or feedback, please contact me. I love to talk about this topic.